So You Want to Be President by Judith St. George Illustrated by David Small Question of the Week What is the job of the President of the United States? Genre Expository text gives information about real people and events. As you read, note new or surprising information about our country's presidents. There are good things about being president, and there are bad things about being president. One of the good things is that the president lives in a big white house called the White House. Another good thing about being president is that the president has a swimming pool, bowling alley, and movie theater. The president never has to take out the garbage. The president doesn't have to eat yucky vegetables. As a boy, George H.W. Bush had to eat broccoli. When George H.W. Bush grew up, he became president. That was the end of broccoli. One of the bad things about being president is that the president always has to be dressed up. William McKinley wore a frock coat, vest, pinstriped trousers, stiff white shirt, black satin tie, gloves, a top hat, and a red carnation in his buttonhole every day. The president has to be polite to everyone. The president can't go anywhere alone. The president has lots of homework. People get mad at the president. Someone once threw a cabbage at William Howard Taft. That didn't bother Taft. He quipped, I see that one of my adversaries has lost his head. Lots of people want to be president. If you want to be president, it might help if your name is James. Six presidents were named James. President Carter liked to be called Jimmy. Four Johns, four Williams, President Clinton liked to be called Bill, three Georges, two Andrews, and two Franklins all became president. If you want to be president, your size doesn't matter. Presidents have come in all shapes and sizes. Abraham Lincoln was the tallest, six feet four inches. His stovepipe hat made him look even taller. James Madison was the smallest, five feet four inches, and only one hundred pounds. William Howard Taft was the biggest, more than three hundred pounds. He was so big that he had a special tub built for his White House bathroom. Four men could fit in the tub. Though the Constitution says you'll have to wait until you're 35, young, old, and in between have become president. Theodore Teddy Roosevelt, at 42, was the youngest. He had pillow fights with his children and played football on the White House lawn. You must always remember that the president is about six, a friend said. Ronald Reagan was the oldest. When he first ran for president, he was 69. He joked that it was the 30th anniversary of his 39th birthday. Do you have pesky brothers and sisters? Every one of our presidents did. Benjamin Harrison takes the prize. He had 11. It's lucky he grew up on a 600-acre farm. James Polk and James Buchanan 
both had nine. George Washington, Thomas Jefferson, James Madison, and John Kennedy each had eight. Two presidents were orphans, Andrew Jackson and Herbert Hoover. A president in your family tree is a plus. John Quincy Adams was John Adams's son. George W. Bush was the son of George H. W. Bush. Theodore Roosevelt and Franklin Roosevelt were fifth cousins. Benjamin Harrison was William Harrison's grandson. James Madison and Zachary Taylor were second cousins. Do you have a pet? All kinds of pets have lived in the White House, mostly dogs. Herbert Hoover had three dogs, Piney, Snowflake, and Tut. Tut must have been a Democrat. He and his Republican master never got along. Franklin Roosevelt's dog, Fala, was almost as famous as his owner. George H. W. Bush's dog wrote Millie's book, Adventures of a White House Dog, as reported to Mrs. Bush. Ulysses Grant had horses. Benjamin Harrison's goat pulled his grandchildren around in a cart. The Coolidges had a pet raccoon. Jimmy Carter and Bill Clinton preferred cats. Theodore Roosevelt's children didn't just have pets. They ran a zoo. They had dogs, cats, guinea pigs, mice, rats, badgers, raccoons, parrots, and a Shetland pony called Algonquin. To cheer up his sick brother, young Quentin once took Algonquin upstairs in the White House elevator. Though most presidents went to college, nine didn't. George Washington, Andrew Jackson, Martin Van Buren, Zachary Taylor, Millard Fillmore, Abraham Lincoln, Andrew Johnson, Grover Cleveland, and Harry Truman. Andrew Johnson couldn't read until he was 14. He didn't learn to write until after he was married. Thomas Jefferson was top-notch in the brains department. He was an expert on agriculture, law, politics, music, geography, surveying, philosophy, and botany. In his spare time, he designed his own house, a mansion, founded the University of Virginia, and whipped up the Declaration of Independence. Almost any job can lead to the White House. Presidents have been lawyers, teachers, farmers, sailors, engineers, surveyors, mayors, governors, congressmen, senators, and ambassadors. Harry Truman owned a men's shop. Andrew Johnson was a tailor. Ronald Reagan was a movie actor. There they are, a mixed bag of presidents. What did they think of being head man? George Washington, who became our very first president in 1789, worried about his new line of work. I greatly fear that my countrymen will expect too much from me, he wrote to a friend. He was a howling success. Some loved the job. No president has ever enjoyed himself as much as I, Theodore Roosevelt said. Others hated it. The four most miserable years of my life, John Quincy Adams complained. Every president was different from every other, and yet no woman has been president. No person of color has been president. No person who wasn't a Protestant or a Roman Catholic has been president. 
But if you care enough, anything is possible. Thirty-four presidents came and went before a Roman Catholic, John Kennedy, was elected. Almost two hundred years passed before a woman, Geraldine Ferraro, ran for vice president. It's said that people who run for president have swelled heads. It's said that people who run for president are greedy. They want power. They want fame. But being president can be wanting to serve your country, like George Washington, who left the Virginia plantation he loved three times to lead the country he loved even more. It can be looking toward the future, like Thomas Jefferson, who bought the Louisiana Territory and then sent Lewis and Clark west to find a route to the Pacific. They did. It can be wanting to turn lives around, like Franklin Roosevelt, who provided soup and bread for the hungry, jobs for the jobless, and funds for the elderly to live on. It can be wanting to make the world a better place, like John Kennedy, who sent Peace Corps volunteers around the globe to teach and help others. Every single president has taken this oath. I do solemnly swear or affirm that I will faithfully execute the office of President of the United States and will, to the best of my ability, preserve, protect, and defend the Constitution of the United States. Only 35 words. But it's a big order when you're president of this country. Abraham Lincoln was tops at filling that order. I know very well that many others might, in this matter, as in others, do better than I can, he said. But I am here. I must do the best I can and bear the responsibility of taking the course which I feel I ought to take. That's the bottom line. Tall, short, fat, thin, talkative, quiet, vain, humble, lawyer, teacher, or soldier. This is what most of our presidents have tried to do, each in his own way. Some succeeded, some failed. If you want to be president, a good president, pattern yourself after the best. Our best have asked more of themselves than they thought they could give. They have had the courage, spirit, and will to do what they knew was right. Most of all, their first priority has always been the people and the country they served.